Well, yeah, with the admin, all the, like the schools, like the Trevises and stuff like that, do you get a lot of young guys approaching you for work, uh, as in, for in, in, <coughs> engineering work? And I do, or to volunteer here, and that I do do sometimes. Um, um, is it basically yes. a one, is it a one-man <laughs> operation at Studio 92? I do more have, an, more I more have another engineer also, and um, so we kind of share the work, and uh, but. And I have an accountant that does my accounting, but um, basically, you know, it's it's a very small operation. So, okay, what the, uh, if you can mention what you're out of the now now magazine and how people can get a hold of you if they want. To sure. Okay. Yeah, I do run an ad in Now Magazine uh, every week, and um, it's in there under studios, music studios. So uh, anytime you want to reach me, <coughs> you can call me and get the number out of the Now Magazine. Or, or what's what is your number? We'll put it right across the screen. <laughs> All right, it's four one six. Four six seven nine five nine seven, and you can ask for Norm. <laughs> so basically, yeah, we're just bringing tracks up and down and fiddling with the EQs to uh, make things sound as good as they can possibly sound, um, which of course is, you know, subjective. But um, well, we all agree that it sounds as good as it. So what were your customers you left with? Like, a, uh, what kind of would I walk away here with a master? Is that? Uh, yeah, he'll walk away with a digital master um, called a DAT tape, and um, a lot of recording is analog. It's pretty standard to, uh, you know, mix down to a DAT or a digital format. And of course, everyone's making a CD anyway, so. Okay, as for I guess that's the ultimate goal. Once they've got this DAT tape, will you just send them on their way to a CD manufacturer? Or? Yeah, or to a masterer. Um, once they leave here, it's a really good idea before you make a CD to go to a mastering facility, and um, there they'll they'll take your digital tape, they'll put it into their computer. Um, once you've sat with your your tape for a while, you might decide that you like oh a little more bottom or a little less bottom end or more high end or whatever, and they can do that there for you. They can put your songs in order with the right make the space in between, no problem, and um, and bring the volume up of, of your CD so it's maybe comparable to, you know, some million dollar job that's out there, and something that you'll be proud of. Uh, for, a, for a low mm -hmm. estimate, is there any type, kind of budget you can set on like an album for if somebody wants to put out an album, you do $15,000, $20,000 mm -hmm. unrealistic in today's market to come up with something you could sell? Well, that's that's too much money. Is like, that right? Eh? I don't think you'd ever have to spend that. Well, not here anyway. Okay. Um, you know, I've done like live albums here in, in a day or two, and um, which would cost somebody maybe you know five six hundred dollars. And I've also done you know albums where we've taken a lot of care, and, and maybe tops would be like five five thousand dollars. So you know, I'm not dealing I'm not dealing with you know superstar artists in my studio, really. I'm, I'm doing a lot of independent bands, and um, maybe bands that are signed, but newly signed. Um, you know, probably m well, my biggest success maybe is the Irish Descendants. There's two gold records up there on the wall. And um, they started out as independent, and then they got signed, and um, they're doing very well. Okay, uh, uh, well, obviously we got some pretty good caliber artists here. I've uh, got the Irish Descendants. Can you tell me a little bit about them? Yes, they were, you know, just fantastic to work with. They, they've done two albums here, and um, they're from Newfoundland, and uh, they come here to record. And it's um, it's a lot of fun when they come here. You know, they're they're party guys, and uh, but they take their music very seriously. They have a really good balance. Now, in a case like this where the, there was a success, you're saying a gold album is basically. Was your your part of the bargain once you be given the tape? That was it. Do you, would you get any residuals or something? It would be a successful recording as a producer. No, um, I was actually the the co-producer, and um, you know, uh, if I had wanted to ask for something maybe beforehand, I could have. But I, I was just thrilled to do the album and um, have them in the studio. So, um, but yeah, you can work out things like that. Yeah. Uh, is there is there a problem with copywriting? Is that is that really a problem? Is just a young songwriter be worried that hey somebody's going to come around with some fancy dancy producer and steal my stuff? I well, I don't think there's a problem with it, and um, 
in my like 11 years of doing this, I've never heard of anyone having their song stolen. But um, you could just send yourself a, a tape of your song when you're finished and and uh, send it registered and don't open it. And that's pretty good proof. And there's usually a whole pile of witnesses that know when you wrote that song and know when you started maybe putting it together with the band. And your engineer knows when you recorded it. And you know you're going to have witnesses too. So. I, don't, I wouldn't be paranoid about it, and if you want to, you can send yourself a tape. Uh, can you talk about maybe the advantages of having a demo tape and the fact that you can get gigs and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. Like, a band that's looking for work, they may want to come in and just do a live off the floor or something very quick, you know, three or four hours of some songs that they're going to be playing at the bar when they go to the bar to play, and uh, that'll give the, the bar owner a very good idea, of course, of what are going to sound like in, in the bar, and that, I think a lot of bar owners probably ask for that. So. Tell me the Headstone story. Yeah, they they came here a few times way back when, before they were rich and famous, and um, do they ignore you now? <laughs> no, no, uh, no, they don't. But uh, you know, they've had a lot of success, and I recorded their first basic demos that got them signed, and and. Uh, it was, you know, a real joy to work with them. They're a bunch of characters and uh, great musicians, great songwriters. I think there's, uh, uh, there's not too much of a, a demand for vinyl, but it w- I noticed you got some cons- cassettes here. Is that a cheap way to go, or is there for people that are for a demo, or is? It yeah, lo- lots of guys will just make a cassette, maybe starting off, and you know, if they're playing in a bar, they'll try and sell their cassettes and. Um, I think the way to go now, though, is to make a CD, and I know it costs a little bit more, but you can sell it for a little bit more, so if you're playing in a bar, you can actually sell them when you play, and lots of bands have actually recovered their recording costs by doing that, and can raise money to record their next project, so I think it's a, a grand idea. Nor's first professional recording gig. Well, it was actually very funny. Um, you, you're probably all familiar with the program Do South, and uh, Paul yeah, Gross, Paul Gross yeah. is the uh, lead actor. Well, he was in a band, and um, I had just gotten some more equipment and decided to start something in my house. So here we are in the upstairs of my house, and I didn't really know too much about what I was doing. And, and uh, this is a long time ago. And uh, so yeah, Paul came in with a, a band, and I, you know, to me, I, I think I did the worst recording job ever. But nothing I'd ever play for you. But um, and at that time, I guess I, Paul mentioned that he had some kind of acting career going on. But um, little did we all know that he'd be a you know a big star in Do South. So I, I wish I'd done a better job for you, Paul. <laughs> Well, maybe you can bribe me on them, not, not to release it. Paul Gross really Oh, I'm sure they never release it. <laughs> what kind of things were you doing for a living before you got into here? Um, oh, well, you know, the taxi was great because I could go on the road and come back and have a job. Yeah. Well, basically, uh, hard rock? You know, yeah, sorry. well, blues and, and you know, uh, rhythm and blues. I played with the John Bell show band stuff. You know, something to pay the bills while like I drunk. So. Yeah, it's like you know, you, you may be a uh, you know an engineer, but you may not necessarily be a like, you know electronics guy. Right. Who, who takes care of your maintenance equipment? Um, there's a company called Teletech that has a really good um, guy that you know can service the machines well and. Um, Basic things though I can do myself, you know, uh, alignments and bias and all that. And yes, you pull out the drawers there and you'll see all kinds of, well, it's a wrong side for you, but there's all kinds of gizmos in these drawers. I don't know just there, and, you know, once you get the hang of it, it's not very hard. Yeah. So. For, some, uh, for somebody who wants to uh, take up engineering as, as a career, do you suggest going to the schools or is it basically a self, you being self-taught? Well, I think the schools are a good idea. Um, Overpriced? I'm not sure about what they charge, um, you know, but you, you definitely do have to have that practical experience too. I never did go to a school myself, you know, it just sort of grew, and that maybe, I don't even know if there was schools back when I started, but, um, you know, uh, the practical is very important, so if you're going to those schools, make sure you get lots of practical, all you can, 
and uh, that's really the only way you're going to develop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You're way ahead of me. Okay. Go ahead, Dorm. Yeah, I just finished doing a CD for Mark Haynes and Tom Layton, who you may have heard of, and or Mark Haynes and the Zippers, and that's uh, more or less a Celtic type CD. It's really it's making a big comeback. Yeah. Well, it's just it's huge now. Yes, you know, the whole Celtic movement. It is, and it's great music. Lots of heart and soul in it. So I wish them lots of success. And, and the Conscious Pilot too are doing well. They they're up here. Way up there, right there, and they, they're more of a 70s style band. Glam rock, it looks like. Yeah, and uh, very talented, though, and they do a great job, so I wish them lots of success, too. And, and everybody else I've forgotten to mention. Anybody else? <laughs> no, well, no. Uh, one thing, you, you I, I don't know, uh, well, you, this must be the case where you get some people come, come in and have more more uh, money than talent. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, not very often. Yeah. I think most of the people that record are probably ready to record in some sense of the word. Well, what, what do you do in a case like, you know, obviously you're professional, but somebody coming with a style of music that's just not your cup of tea, how do you work through it? Uh, I don't know. I, I Like, I really do like all kinds of music, so basically I think if I just do like a really good job from my end, like try and make it sound the best that I can make it sound, um, that sort of satisfies me, you know. Okay. Yeah, and and of course they have to be happy too. But as long as that, you know, like care is taken and, and and everyone does the best that they can do, then generally I think we're all pretty happy with it. Yeah. You get a lot of your customers are like ongoing, and your your relationships with your customers they come back again and again. Obviously, because you're such a good, nice guy. But well, thank you. Um, yeah, I do get a lot of repeat business, like. Like it's great. I'm very, very happy and thrilled about it. But any website yet? Is there a nice no, you know, I just I haven't had the desire or the urge to, to do that. And you know, part of me sometimes says, well, maybe I should do that just because everyone else is doing it. But you know, I haven't really found a, a need for it. So just more money to spend for <laughs> for what? So I can see myself on the website. So. Mm. Oh, here. Yeah. No, that's that's. <laughs> That's for my granddaughter. Not my granddaughter. My I'm her god. Besides, uh, besides the drums? Oh, myself? No. Yeah. No. I can't say that I do. <laughs> so the keyboard in that is basically for somebody else when they're coming in, they have access to it. It's for other people, yeah. I can program drums for, for people on it, you know, like in the MIDI. Um, but I'll always probably recommend that they get a real drummer first. So can't, can't beat the real thing. You cannot beat the real thing, you know? No.